What's up everybody, I'm John. I'm Isaac. And on today's episode of Cars and Cameras, we're doing more two-stroke goodness, except today we are using a Yamaha KT100, uh, which is a small 100cc two-stroke engine used on racing go-karts and I think ultralights. But today we're not putting it on a go-kart, no. We are putting it on a mini bike, because why not? So this engine is going on a mini bike because we just happen to have a Monster Moto frame with no engine. Plus, we're interested to see how a 100cc two-stroke will compare against like a four-stroke 212. And where is it? That is it. So this thing hopefully will move out. This is the very first mini bike we had on cars and cameras. First ever, dude. First ever, we did a 212 swap on it. This thing is iconic. What happened to it? Ah, <laughs> uh, we robbed the engine for something, man. There's no telling. So this chassis is a Monster Moto, originally equipped with a 79cc four-stroke, making a whopping, I don't know, I'm gonna say three or four horsepower. Two and a half. Two and a half horsepower. Yeah. We did our best to modify to make more power. We removed the governor, we did uh, kind of all the DIY years. mods and it didn't seem to get any better at all. I, no, it was a little better. You think so? Yeah. Okay, it seemed to get a little bit better, but it went from extremely slow to slow. <laughs> too slow, yeah. We've already gone the 212 route on this thing. It was one of our first videos, one of our most popular videos. Check it out if you have not seen it yet. So today we're gonna play around with the KT100 two-stroke. Not a problem. We have ourselves a KT100 engine. One of the guys at Go Power Sports, Aaron. He actually gave us this engine at the paint swap meet in April 2019, and I misspoke. I think I said it had eight or nine horsepower. Actually makes 15 horsepower at over 10,000 RPM. So it is gonna cook on that thing. So this thing was geared for like 55, 60 with a 6,000 RPM 212 on it. We're almost doubling the peak RPM. So we are gonna put a much larger rear sprocket on it from gopowersports.com. Check it out at a link in the description of this video. 35 chain, 85 teeth. You can get them 53 teeth through, I think, 90. So that's on the bigger side of things. All right, let's get started on this swap. All right, dude, first things first, we got to see if this thing will fit. I already see a problem. Oh, no. Uh, the sprocket's going to be on the other side. This one wants the sprocket to be on the right side. Now, I know two-stroke, you can spin it either way. That's the beauty of a two-stroke. Uh, but why don't we see if this thing fits first? And we have two bolts here, but let's see if it fits right now. Woo! It'll fit. Oh, it fits? Oh man, that's, that's great. That looks so It looks cool, so dude. good, man. Yeah. Oh man, I'm getting chills, honestly. I love it, man. I love it already. So here's the problem that Ike was explaining earlier. A two-stroke will spin both ways, but if you look at how the chain guard is set up, it's not meant to be spinning this way for the sprock to be lined up on this side. So, And plus, the intake's in the back, the exhaust is in the front. We're going to see if we can spin it around and move the sprocket to the other side of the axle. Dude, it looks so good, though. I, I can't describe why. I, man, I don't know why it looks so good, but it does. Maybe just because it's something different. Could be. It's a nice tight fit though, dude. Yep. And I think the fins look cool too. That exhaust now. Oh. Look, all we gotta do is make a uh, 90 degree angle from, from that to this exhaust. Holy cow, I call that thing a leg burner, dude. thing was actually too bolted to that so I'm guessing that we can probably two bolt it into the center of that uh frame I am down four bolt would be better and take 
those off and then I'm gonna reinstall this. It's in there even better. I know, it's great. The only problem I have is the exhaust. I think we got a tiny dirt bike on our hands, dude. We could put a little itty bitty swing arm on it with some shocks. Yeah, man, the gears are turning in my head. There it is. Now we just need to go whoop and put it back. All right, so while we have this rear wheel out, I'm gonna go ahead and switch to our new split sprocket right here. And it's going to make that thing huge. So what we have here is a very early Cars and Cameras adapter bracket that Ike made so we could stick a smaller gear on this puppy. Here, this is a number 35, very old. Uh, I think it's 53. It's probably a 53, which is as small as you can go. Oh, it's a 58. 58? Yeah, so it's definitely on the smaller side. Well, that's cool. That's a uh, <laughs> humongous <laughs> difference there, buddy. Oh, yeah. We're going to be doing wheelies all day long. Oh, yeah, thing. dude. So the only thing to really know about these split sprockets is you need to make sure to line up those ticks right there. Are we sure we want to go something that big? Yes. Yeah. Really? What, going around corners? Going around corners. Left hand, right hand turns. The sprocket might hit the concrete. I don't know. I'm kind of thinking we should roll the dice and see what happens. All right. We got a sprocket. I couldn't believe it, but the brake caliper will bolt onto either side of the bike. Here we go. It's bolted in place, and it's going to be working. No cutting, no welding, no grinding, dude. No cutting, no welding, Nothing. no grinding. Uh, the only thing I had to do was stack three washers between this mounting point and the caliper bracket to try to get it in the right spot. And that's it, man. She's bolted up and good to go. Excellent. So we're going to be using this small spun aluminum fuel tank from GoPowerSports.com. It's really good on like a race bike or a show bike. But we're going to be using it on this project because it just fits so well in the frame and it's going to look awesome. One thing to note, they could have changed it since they sent us this one, but you're going to need to drill your own hole for a vent so you can have a vent for your fuel tank. about is maybe a tire expansion. We have a pretty good idea of what we want to do with the exhaust. We're going to go ahead, mark, drill, and mount the engine. We are running into a few issues with the fit of the exhaust. Main thing being that it's just so close to this rear tire. We just put air in this tire and we're looking at less than a half inch of clearance between the tire and this nice 90 degree angle I made for our exhaust. We can't push the engine forward with this sprocket on it because the chain is already dangerously to, uh, close to hitting the frame. And we don't want to put a smaller sprocket on it right now because this thing is going to spin to 12,000 RPM. We don't want to have a 70 mile an hour mini bike on our hands that has a really hard time getting off the line. So long story short, to sum it up, we're going to rig it up as is, test it, see if we can re-gear it from there and refine it. All right, so we're at the point where we need to mix up some fuel for this thing. Ike even 
hooked up the kill switch on this thing, so it is just sweet. I guess now would be a good time to say that we don't actually know if this engine runs, so there's that. But uh, <laughs> we've had pretty good luck in the past, knock on wood, we might be getting a little bit cocky. Uh, read online that for fuel mixing ratio, could be 16 to 1, 20 to 1, or 30 to 1. So we're going to choose the middle ground of 20 to 1. Let's do it. It looks good. All right, you ready? I'm ready. Do we want to check for spark? Yeah. No spark. I see no spark. So it could be the plug or it could be something else. Well, I uh, remember Aaron said something about he had an issue with spark. Yes. Before. So, could be that. She should spin over easier now with the spark plug out. It's probably going to be wet. It is. We know we got fuel in. We know we have fuel. Just no spark. I don't like the spark plug. It looks like it's a uh, iridium or or something. Let me hold it right there. Sure. You ready? I'm ready. No spark. Negative. All right. So, uh, did you want to grab a known good spark plug? Yep. Hit it, dude. Nothing. Not nothing. I don't want to run it, crank it over too long because I don't know how well it's oiling when it's not running. Right. So, uh, no spark. Uh, I've adjusted the gap on that coil down there. So, I'm thinking there's. It looks like there's only two things that can go wrong with this, and that's the coil and then that... Uh, like the CDI, basically. The well, module. Whatever that is on the side of the block. So, man, I, I feel like we need to get both. So, I mean, we're kind of stuck here. Yeah. We're stuck. We can't finish this without new parts. We took a frame, the OG Monster Moto frame, we swapped the axle around, we put a KT100 engine on it, rigged the exhaust up, and got right there. And just, no, no spark. No bueno. So, I do have some good news though. We are working on getting a new headquarters. In fact, closing is two days from now. It should be before you guys see this video. It has a ton of land, a bunch of different types of land, on the property and house that I'll be living in and uh, a small workshop that uh, we are gonna be putting a roof on putting a roof on and moving to yeah uh, so it's incredibly exciting uh, to finally be moving onwards and upwards from my parents garage and yard thank you parents for your patience but um yeah no it's 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 very very exciting so next time we see you we should have a coil and a TCI module. Shout out to Aaron at Go Power Sports for hooking us up with this engine. And of course, for all your go-kart and mini bike needs, use gopowersports.com. Let them know that Cars and Cameras sent you uh, when you're checking out. And don't forget to enter their monthly in-store credit giveaway. Leave a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Finally doing a two-stroke project. Well, we're doing a bunch of two-stroke projects, to be honest. Uh, Facebook, Instagram, at Cars and Cameras Reviews for sneak peeks on what we're up to. Support the channel by picking up a t-shirt at cars-cameras.com. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you next time.